sound simple to some people, but to me, uh, it's an achievement for 2020. I use not to now to pray. I come from a family where it's laissez-faire. Like, um, the elders really don't care. The way you live your life, as long as they've given you education, uh, to them that's the most important thing. So, if you knock, you can decide to reverse, or park, or drive, you knock again, you sort yourself. Um, but I happen to have our last born, imagine the last born. Um, she's a born again, she prays from a certain church in Entebbe. So whenever I would have like a family gathering, she would always say something about, uh, about Jesus. And then she would always make sure that she prays. But whenever she would pray, me, I would just close my eyes and I tell God, you know me. Uh, and then uh, what I knew, like God, the Bible says you knew me before I was born. So you know what I need? Give me. And that would be it for me. And then when she prays, she would get into that moment when she's casting out demons, what, and I would be so afraid. So at some point I would stop her and be like, Angela, when you cast out these demons, where do they go? So I wouldn't really want to, to be near her. So at the start of 2020, I got uh, lots of problems, but I would just cry. I went into depression, I got so stressed, but something would keep telling me, call that little girl. So I'd always call her. She prays for me over the phone. Even just saying uh, a night prayer, for me, I did not really know. So all the time I would call her. There's this, pray for me. So I listen to her, and the best I would say, man, God bless you. So she started inviting me to go to, to her church in Entebbe. But whenever I would go there, the other people could pray. I would sit in my corner, I just put my head down. And the best I would tell them, as in after they've prayed, I'll be like, amen, amen. So I kept, I kept driving there every Sunday, every Sunday. So one time that pastor also preached a very powerful sermon, and it's like he was talking to me. He said, um, some of you, even when you get a headache, you have to call someone, pray for me, pray for me. When will you learn to pray for yourself? Seek God yourself. It doesn't matter whatever church you go to, but learn to seek God yourself. So that day I came back, and I don't know, by the grace of God, I was scrolling through uh, my Facebook account, and I saw something like moving on from rejection. And then I saw a picture of a lady in a yellow go messy. So uh, I kept asking myself, what kind of rejection is this lady talking about? So I had a friend, like we share a lot. I told, before I knew it, I, I clicked on the link, and the next thing, I was in a WhatsApp group. Yes, yes, you can, warrior. So I kept following whatever they would post, and then the inspirations. And then one time, uh, there's a friend of mine who, was, who had come to attend a wedding. She works in Fort Porto. So she asked me to drop her at Hotel Triangle. So that day, I was just in my sneakers, well, just to drop her. Then when I dropped her, something's like, why don't you go to that church? It's just there. So as I was even driving off, I just found myself parking. I came. That first time I sat at 11. But in my mind, I kept looking at um, Pastor Sandra. And me, I was trying to relate her with rejection. And I wasn't seeing any connection. So I went back, uh, my, my friends, I mean, the wedding ended at around 11, I mean seven, but still I didn't know how to pray. 
People were being delivered, people were crying. My worry is like, what if these demons come to me? Flavia, you've gone for problems. At some point, I even first went to the washroom and I came back, I just kept being alert, like no one should fall on me. So after, after the wedding, I drove back my friend. I mean, I went, I picked her. Then I started uh, narrating to her. I'm sorry, it's a little long. So I said narrating to her, my encounter. Then for me, I was like, but I saw the pastor. She has no relation with rejection. <laughs> If you see, the other lady says she was rejected, but she's just like even, what? She's not even above 40. To me, I don't think, maybe there's something. You know, these days, I, I'm sorry, but we spoke, we spoke. So, then she was like, but no. If something is convicting you, you try to go back. So I kept there. Some other Saturday, but I kept listening to, to the inspirations then I think that was, uh, the next week was uh, the week of fasting. Me, I would say I, I used to go on stronger height. I mean, hunger strikes, but for fasting, I really even didn't know what do you tell God, you know? So I joined, but um, I would download the voice notes and listen. Then somehow I started you know, praying. And I, my prayer to God, my, my request to God was that, God, if you've caught me yourself, please, I want a church where they're not going to preach for me this gospel of prosperity, receive, receive, no. I want someone who's going to teach me and walk with me so that I learn to seek God myself, such that in the absence of that person, I can still talk to you. That was my request. So after that week of fasting, uh, the Saturday for, I think, the deliverance service, I came. I sat at the back because I was afraid of people falling, demons entering me, you know. So when I sat there, the team, uh, the, the, the choir members started singing some song. At least I knew that song. I said, sing along with them and praying and praying. I'm like, God, if I just need to know you myself, I don't want anyone to lead me. So as I was praying, I, at, um, I think it was the Holy Spirit, something just came and swept me. And I felt my body, you know, cold, hot, cold, hot. The time I woke up, I was here. I just went, I walked slowly and went back and sat. But I felt so, so weak after. I was so, so weak to the point that when I was going back, I just called a friend. I'm like, I'm not sure I can even drive. She came and picked me. Immediately, I called my sister, the last born. And I went to this church. This lady came. In fact, you didn't even touch me. She just passed near me, and that thing just swept me off. And my sister said, Flavia, that's the Holy Spirit. I said, you mean? <laughs> she, was like, <laughs> she was like, yes, that's the Holy Spirit. I'm so happy for you. Continue going to, that, I mean, to that church. Continue praying. And let me tell you, sisters and, and brothers, uh, from that day, I learned to pray on my own. The first time I prayed, I called uh, my, my daughter, she's eight years, the maid and what, we, start, we started singing, putting gospel, prayed, prayed. And then after I had prayed, my daughter said, she stood and said, hey, mommy, you can pray. <laughs> I was so, so happy. So for me, I, I, I kept, I wanted to. Something was telling me, don't testify, don't. It's something small, but to me, it's the greatest achievement for 2020. Yes. Maybe um, just the, the last time, uh, the last Saturday I was here, Pastor Sandra said some people sit behind, they keep watching. What? You can't believe there are people out there who don't know how to pray. So I was among those, but now I've graduated and... Amen. 
I give all glory and honor to God. Thank you so much. I can tell you this is, I've been, I would say, I'll use this word for lack of a better word. I've roamed in churches. I used to escort my friends. But some of the sermons there really are not so relevant to some lives. To me, the best is teach me, you know? Teach me how to do it so that I can also testify on my own. And it's, it's a very good ministry. I, I used to accept Jesus just for just. Like if I follow friends, the moment they say, who of you is accepting? I would be number one, but it would end there. The moment I'm out, that is it. But two months down the road, and I'm still coming here, I'm really, really grateful to God. My name is Musubika Irene. I have a lot to testify to God. To be here and be a part of this ministry is a blessing. I thank God for that. And for convicting me to serve him. Because I used to think it is for other people. That's not meant for me. I'm supposed to be somewhere there. Watch all of them. See whoever is doing what and all things. But God touched my heart and told me, my daughter, <laughs> you must serve me. I thank him for that. I have a lot God has been tremendous in my life. He has done great things for me. I cannot tell. Actually, that song, I cannot tell it all. But to be brief, I come from a family which is polygamous. Very polygamous. My grandfather was polygamous. He gave birth to over 40 plus children. And then my dad specifically followed his and gave birth to about 19, 19 or 20 of us. And that's where I come from. And where I come from, I don't know whether you people have heard of Butaleja. That's where I come from. And as you are saying, oh, what have you heard about them? <laughs> I grew up hearing all those things. But I thank God specifically because in my clan, where I come from, that that all that witchcraft and stuff would not because they are the people they would tell us they can cast a tree and the tree would dry there and then those are the kind of people but I never saw it physically though that's what is told and based on that background I came up growing but before even growing my, my father married very many there actually the person he wedded we were not even born I was not born never gave birth. He married to very many people who never gave birth. The one he wedded never gave birth and left. And then those that gave birth, including my mother, the first ones were giving birth to male children. And then he had a yearning for a, young, for a girl. And then that's when my mother comes in the picture. And after giving birth to a boy, they also tell her, ah, this is now a waste of time. Then eventually I come in. He was so happy. They were so happy. I, I had this favor in his eyes. He would speak my name in the morning, in, at noon, at night. Actually, whenever he came back from work, it is me he, he always wanted to look at. Whenever he would go, he wanted to look at me. But in the presence of a stepmother, you can imagine what was going on. I was young, but this man loved me so much, so much that I do not know what was behind it. But I thank God because it was there now. That alone, I think, made them to, to, to gang up these other ones against my mother. She ended up, of course, I don't know, but the situation surrounding about her leaving, it must be some bit of witchcraft and stuff. So that rejection that was unto her, I think, may have also followed me, and I was also part of their target. Because why would a man praise a, 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 a girl in, in front of, of her children, and yet she also has children? So somehow... I, when I grow up, that's when I get to realize that something is amiss somewhere. And uh, I first joined this group on Facebook. That was ar around four years ago, I think. I had, uh, I, I had a, a smartphone, and then I, I saw, yes, you can, something on what? Oh, four years. Yeah, and, and then I, I joined, but I didn't, I didn't take it serious. I, I went on like that, like that. And then when I had just joined, shortly, it was hardly a month, I lost the phone. And then everything went with it. 
when I get another phone, I somehow want to get back, but I couldn't. I, I had to use my, my former Facebook. The fo the, this time round, I had to open another account because the other one, I don't know, somehow I think of why it was the devil. It just disappeared like that. So I opened another one, and in the new one, I would not. And that's when I was going through a lot. That is when I realized rejection was real, but I did not know actually it was rejection. I was rejected in relationships. My mother's in-law rejected me. The first relationship I was in, my mother-in-law rejected me. And she said, you cannot get married to my son. For us in Buganda, we cannot get married to Nani Buganda. You are Catholic, we are Catholic, you are not. Then I was, I would tell them, I'm born again, I, am, I was there in between, I was not sure where I was. And when life goes on, it goes on, it goes on, that one failed. And that first one also failed because I had this strong anger. I, I had anger, serious anger that I would start up a fight with a man and we would fight, you know, flexing with a man. And somehow I thought I had the energy. And then along the way after flexing about two blows, I would get weak. And then he gets on me and beats the hell out of me. That was the life I was living in. But it was because of anger. I would not let something go. How would you? It starts something small and I would not be quiet. Mama keeps telling us, we have to submit. I could not submit. I would tell you, me, my father raised me. I was loved by my mother, by my father. Who are you? I would tell them all those things. But this was a rejection that was following me. Things failed, things failed. Now in this, in this one here, that specifically has brought me to test five. Uh, somehow you know those things you meet and then um, at work and then things happen and then before you know it you are pregnant and then before it you know you have settled you know you have a man you know <laughs> on your own without God but somehow in me because before my father died he died he got born again and then he he lured all of us into getting to it but I was there I would not feel it but my father loved it so much. I think he realized salvation was the only way. Only that I think he died with these bondages. He had not broken that, that the, the, the a injury for breaking bondages then. It was uh, this injury of Chituare. We are going, we are getting those things. This, these things are of recent. And I thank you, Mama, for this revival. It is a, a revival. We are thankful. Because very many people... Uh, call themselves born again. But even in their being born again, the devil still calls them their own. Yeah, his own. The, the, the devil uses them in every way, but yet they are in church. Yeah. Situations worsen. They get challenges every now and then. That's why at some point some people were laughing at born again and they are saying, Kakati mwe. Which God do you serve? You are all those things. But I thank God that uh, this revival takes us to where the problem is, the core of the problem, and we are able to pray about ourselves and life changes. So during lockdown, my cousin, I have a cousin, she's born again and she stays in Tororo. She, she somehow texts me, we were talking about family issues, there were some, some family wrangles and we were talking about them and she said, oh Irene, there is this Yes You Can WhatsApp group, I, I'm going to send you the link and you join, I know you, you are born again, but it is good, just listen to those inspirations, they inspire, they give you, they give you life, you just join and see, if you don't want you would delete, but you, you just join, I'm like okay, you send it to me, so during lockdown around May, I'm in group 6, I join. I first be in Kamoli. I'm like, uh, well, what is going on here? But then the inspirations were, were deep. They were talking about the situ They were talking about the me. They were talking about, you know, something that is uprooting you from where? Hmm? And, and you are, someone is speaking to your heart, is speaking to what you're going through. And I thank God for the lockdown. I'm not saying this because, um, but somehow in the lockdown, that's when I get closer to God. I am a teacher. And I, I, I'm also thankful I'm a civil servant because I'm in a government-aided school, and I also part-time in a private school, and I also do business on my own. So I am a busy person. I do not have, every time I get home, I'm too tired. But in the lockdown, no school was operating. 
So what was next? Listening to the inspirations, reading the Bible, pray. That was my routine during lockdown. I thank God so much. Now in this relationship, it ended bitterly. It is a long story. I was also rejected by my, grand, my, my mother-in-law. I to, I, I to, we, we sat in a meeting and this man tells me, Naegwe, don't you think I am tired of you? I don't even love you in front of everyone. It crushed me. I cried. I, I, I went back and somehow I was looking in the mirror. I'm like, hey, hey. But it was a rejection that was following me. I did not know. So when I began praying about my situation in the lockdown, we separated bitterly. He, 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 there's a way he, he just tied up everything of mine with the children and, and whatever belonged to us and rented the house. He was not renting, we were staying in his house. He had a car packed, part, part of the stuff in the car. And also, he, he, out of the, what we were going through, he gives me a call and tells me, where are you? I want to give you a, a lift. And, uh, and this had not happened. You know a man who has a car, but his car is like, you just look at it and you're like, you even give up. That was the life I was going through. But somehow he calls me and I'm like, oh God, why is he calling me? And, and he wants me in his car. I think maybe he has reformed. So I was happy, not knowing he was taking me and telling me it is over. You woman stay on your own. I am also staying on my own. It crushed me. I cried. I went through a lot. It was a lot of pain with the children. But I thank God that he provided. Amen. My children never missed school. We never lacked what to eat. I dressed them. I stood as a strong woman. During the lockdown, I pray. But before lockdown, he gives me a call and he's like, Irene, this situation of lockdown, I don't know what is going on, but then I'm going to send you money to shop food. It was a shock. I thank God for that. Someone who had abandoned us. He had gone with someone else. And somehow, back door, I was hearing, they even had Kuchala. It crushed me. That night, I remember, I, I, I don't know what I thought about but at least I didn't think about dying because I knew I, I, I just had gotten deep in Christ and I was like, God, just hold my hand. And if he is not the one, let him go. But if he is the one, I know you're going to bring him back. And in a dream, somehow he tells me that is your husband, but there was a bondage. There was a bondage, I think, on my side and his side. So when Mama Sandra and the inspirations, I kept listening to them and praying during the lockdown. I, I, saw the, I saw deliverance. I, I, used, I would see uh, people coming to operate on my stomach. One part of my stomach had pain. I did not know where it was coming from. I saw those operations. I saw myself eating caterpillars and spitting them and brushing and cleaning my mouth. And I think caterpillars represent witchcraft, kind of. I saw that, but that is thanks to Mama because I was listening to her inspirations and praying. Now, that is when this man begins calling me and he, he quips up us. But I was seeing the sign that he wants to come back, but we had gone through a lot. We had gone through a lot. And, and somehow he knew I still have this anger, but he was, whenever we could talk, he realized I would not blame him over anything, I would not quarrel. Me, I could send you messages and buy another airtime and send you messages abusing you and doing all those things. That was me. That was the anger. That was me. If it were a call, I would call you. When you, you put me off, I resort to messages. I would send them and send them and send them and tell you everything I feel like. That was me. But I thank God that all that is in the past. And this man, two months ago, I have been sitting on this testimony. <laughs> he comes back and he's like, I'm sorry, give me a second chance. I couldn't believe myself. Even right now, the woman whom he thought he had married, over they separated, how I don't know. But it, was, it, must, have, it must have been a, a bitter separation. They are not together, and as I speak, he has a home, he's not staying there, he has tenants, but also the tenants don't pay him. The car is no more, he is footing, he's like me. So somehow God does these things for a reason, I think. <laughs> And at some point, he'll tell you, Irene, if you can, assist me with some 30 See, Omba, I just get it and give it to him. Because I have learned. Mama has taught us how to stand in the gap and how to submit as women. And as we talk, because right now the situation is not okay, but I know in 2021, because also in a dream, God was telling me, your wedding must be in 2021. 
I know it must come to pass. I thank God because he's in my life. He's bringing things. You know those things. But I want to thank God for that. My name is Namaja Faith. I'm we bless the Lord for this ministry. Um, so something has been whispering in my ear. Don't go there. Small, small things. Uh, you wait for them to accumulate. And you'll testify. But I've chosen to shut that voice and come and testify. So my sister, I joined the, I joined the WhatsApp group through my sister. She sent me a link. She said, you like to pray. You said this is, your, this is a year you want to know God more. Join this group. You will see. So I joined the group, um, I would listen to the inspirations. Of course, you start, you start in Kamoli, you're like, you're trying to figure out what's happening. So I joined, um, I think I joined towards the end of the lockdown. Then Pastor Sandra would pray, she would pray for the spirit of bankruptcy, not going forward, stagnation, those things. So me, I would be there telling God, you, I, I, I told God, you see God, I'm, I've been in this relationship for six years, eh? For five years, this is the sixth. If it is not the one for me, go, let it go. But you say when you're saying let it go, you're not sure. Mm -hmm. You're just testing him. <laughs> you're saying maybe it's the one. Let me tell you when we said I said praying when she said first would first. That's when everything went astray. The guy who had never done it, we didn't quarrel, we didn't uh, have a disagreement. He just stopped picking calls. He's not picking calls. You know how you first, you're like, God, what is wrong? You say, please talk to me. He did not talk. He refused to talk on my air type. <laughs> <laughs> then, as I was, I was sitting one time at home, during the lockdown, then the voice, then something reminds me. It's like, you've been there telling God, if it's not for you, let it go away and not waste your time. On that day, it was a Sunday. I sat outside. I said, God, is this it? I said, I, I got my phone, I said, I'm not going to call again. I'm not going to do anything again. That is the, one of the hardest things, but God's grace is sufficient, people. Sure. Because I knew if this relationship ended, I always thought I would be broken, I would go to the drink alcohol, do the, all sorts of things. People, God's grace is sufficient. I would get my phone, listen to inspirations. If I had it at night, I listened to it in the morning. I pray God's grace was sufficient. I didn't feel the urge to call, to text. Now, I told God, God, I'm starting a new journey with you. But my friends, huh, how am I going to move with them? They're in another direction. My first testimony is God brought people who are Somehow tell some other people who are, they were not close to me at that time. I would tell them, you guys, this, this group I'm on. They'd be like, yes, you can. I'm like, yes. Like, yes, we're also on. God brought people around me who are on the same journey with me. <laughs> he gave me sisters. I called them sisters because everything I would say, they would be like, yeah, I was thinking that. It would be in accordance. So I stopped worrying. I stopped worrying about that. So we go back to work. You see, when you're during the lockdown, people were losing jobs. People were getting laid off. Others were being paid half. So I was praying. I would wake up very early in the morning. Uh, means were hard. Like going to work was hard. So you, you, if you're getting someone's lift, you have to be up by 5.30. One day I'm at office. I, had, I think I just listened to the inspiration and prayed. My boss walks into office. Then he comes, his, then he comes and he writes an email. Uh, Faith, da, 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 your salary has been increased. I was like, it is locked down. It's, we're just coming from lockdown. We've not been working. People's salary are cut in half. Mine is getting increased. I blessed God for that. So you see, as us, as, as, as young ladies, there are things you want. So at the beginning of this year, I told God, you see, God, everyone around me is driving. Very childish. Eh? I want to drive. <laughs> but I don't have money. I don't see how I'm going to accumulate it. Lockdown came. I said, now it is over. It cannot happen. We started working again. The money is not, is not uh, accumulating. Now, last week, this guy had told, please help me look for a car. I want to buy a car. Calls me. He tells me, ah, oh, there is a car here I found. I think you will like it. So I, in my head, I was shaking. You found a car for me. I don't have money. But we're praying. Every time every time person would pray for the spirit of stagnation, your money is not increased. You're there, you're working, but not seeing anything out of it. 
I would believe that prayer was for me. That prayer was for me. You people, my mom woke up. She told me, what, where are you looking sad? I said, mommy, there is a car here. It's looking nice, but I don't have money. She said, how much do you have? I told her. She said, mm hmm. But you know you're a lawyer, my daughter. Okay, I'll add for you. You call your father. And you tell him, I said, no. He's just doing projects. He's doing some projects. So he cannot have money. When I called him, he told me, are you sure? You send me the picture of that money. Children of these days, you may want the money for other things. I said, okay. I laid it out. I sent him a picture. He said, okay, I'll call you tomorrow at 10. That was Wednesday. That was Tuesday night. On Wednesday, he call, on Wednesday at 10, he didn't call. I said, I think it is over. Let me text this guy and tell him there is nothing. Uh, we were fasting. Yes, we were fasting. That day I woke up, it was so hard to fast. I kept saying I want to eat. I was thirsty. I was hungry. I felt like I was getting ulcers. But I insisted. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. My dad calls me at 11.30. He's like, where are you? You said, how much is the money? I said, this is the money. He told me, okay, you, if you can leave office, you come, we can get your car. You get, I, I bless the Lord. I, you know, these are prayers we make you think it's childish. People are praying for generational curses, other things. You are saying, God, I want a, you say I want a husband. Very important. I want a car. Most people will be like, you toy <laughs> navizibu. But I, I want, so even when I was going to make this testimony, something was telling me, now you are going to talk about serious things, you're going to talk about a car. But I believe we overcome by the power of our testimony. Yes. So I believe, me, for me, 2020 has not been, people say 2020, it was says that 2020 has blessed me, mostly spiritually, because it has, it has given me people I can pray with, people who are moving the right direction with me. When I say I want to live in, in sexual purity, they are saying that is what we want to do when we are saying we want to get together and pray and listen to the inspirations, read the Bible. You put the best thing you can have is people around you who are not leading you away from God. Yes. Exactly. So I bless the Lord. Uh, Pastor Sandra, God bless you. You have inspired us. You have, you have inspired my family because they see me and they're like, that's Fiona. Oh. <laughs> they are not sure. <laughs> but I bless the Lord. She's my friend, my workmate. Mm. I joined the group locked down. But my mom, okay, like my aunt who raised me, she's a born again. So she was like, Jackie, there is, because I had just given birth. Uh, so she tells me, Jackie, there is this group you should join. Since you're home, you live, you should do what you should join. I'm like, ah, mommy, I pray enough. Again, you want me to join a group? So she's like, just join, okay, just listen to the inspirations and that is it. I'm like, okay. So I listen, but each time I would listen. Like, they would just talk to me. And I would listen, I'll be like, good. Like, there are people who give you testimonies. But can I just one day, like, stand up and go and give you a testimony? So when I had just given birth, my son had, uh, he had, it's called, it's called jaundice. So I had just given birth. I had left home. Then we had to go back to hospital for a week. I was so devastated. I'm like, I have just known you. Why would you do all this right now? So my mom told me, you know what? Do not give up. This, just know this is the end of your struggle. This is the end of your tears. By the time you have reached this time and you have not denied God, no God is going to do something good for you. I said, each time I would be in hospital, I would be like, God, 
if you save my son, I'll give a testimony. So they discharged us. I went back home and I would listen to the inspirations. But you know, in Uganda they say, Stan it I got so lazy in praying. I had promised God, if my son got better, I would give a testimony. I got so lazy in praying. They would call me to pray, and I would pick up the phone, answer, and two minutes back, I'm back in bed. I'm like, but Jackie, really? And you know, the most funny thing is that when you wake up, you're really convicted. And you're like, but you said you would pray. You said you would know God. Why are you sleeping? So I started listening to the inspirations, and then my friends, they would encourage me. They would come home. We would pray together. And so today, no, actually yesterday I was at work, and I told my friend, I actually told her, the one who was just giving her testimony, I told her, you know what, I really feel convicted. I need to go to church tomorrow. Because I would listen online, and we thank you so much for those, the, the platforms. I would listen online, but then yesterday, I just felt in my heart, like, tomorrow go and pray. So I told my friend, I'm like, ah, tomorrow I want to go and pray. She's like, that's very good. You should go. I'm also going. I'm like, okay. So, I, yesterday, I reached home. And um, you know when you have maids and, and, and all. So, I left a camera at home. And it really showed me whatever she does. I was so heartbroken. I'm like... Why? Why does it have to come now? Yet I know tomorrow I have to go and pray. Because eh? I felt I wasn't even like feeling safe to leave her with my child. But in the morning, I started getting lazy. I'm like, ah, let me, maybe let me know. So I, I texted my friend. I told her everything. But then in my heart, in my mind, I remembered. Because my mom told me, you know you have a best friend, but the Holy Spirit is your best friend. If you have a problem, talk to him. If you have anything, talk to him. If you're rejoicing, talk to him. Because he knows you before even your best friend knew you. So it was around 8.22. I sent her a message. I'm like, do you think I can still make it? She's like, Jackie, come. I'm like, you know what? Let me get on a board. As I was coming, I said a prayer in my head. I'm like, Holy Spirit, I can see online the church can get full. But if I reach and I get a front seat... I'm going to give a testimony. <laughs> so other people will be like, ah, now we. It's a chukule se maso. But I came. From yesterday, I really wanted to come to church. And then in the night, I got disorganized. In the morning, I started getting lazy. I'm like, no matter what. I need to go to church. I need to go to church. So as I was coming, I told the Holy Spirit, let me testify. Then I reached there, as I was signing in, I saw like the church is still half empty. I'm like, Holy Spirit, I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. Because it might be something small, but to me, it was really big. I got a front seat. I came to pray. I glorify the Lord. Uh, I'm Slavia Tere, and I've come to testify about the goodness of God. God is so faithful that you can't contain what he does to you if you pay attention to what he does to you. Most of the times we get, we get miracles or we get things but we don't meditate about them and we miss out the bigger part. You go through a situation but you don't, you don't take time to think through it, why you went through it and what you have come out with, yet if you took that time, you would pick a very big testimony out of it. I thank God that he, he has guided me throughout my life, and I thank him that he always shows me, as in he gives me that, that grace to always remember, so that I know why such and such a thing happens to me, it is to give him the glory. I, I am a firstborn of five children, like we are five, 
and we lost our parents when I was 12. I want to thank God. I've, I, I always ask him that I want a platform to testify. Wherever I, I testify among my friends, among like anyone who wishes to listen to me, I can. I have so many testimonies that I can't even, I can't say. But I thank God for this, uh, for this chance because last week I, I, read, I read about the Samaritan woman whom Jesus found on the well, at the well. And they exchanged many things. She ended up going to tell other people when she told the people they came and saw Jesus, then they confessed saying that, yes, we, be we believed because of your testimony, but now we no longer believe because of your testimony. We've seen for ourselves. So the power of the testimony brings many to God and then they experience the goodness of God. Thank you, Mami Sandra, for sharing your testimony. It's the one which has brought all these people here. And now, I believe they can testify on their own. They can know that, yes, we believed because of her testimony, but now we believe because we've seen it ourselves. I thank, I've come to testify about the God, the God, the Father to the fatherless, especially that, the best parent you can ever get. As I've told you, we lost our father when I was, I think, five. I don't remember him. I don't remember anything about my dad. She left, he left us with our mom, who also passed on when I was 12. When he passed on, I was left with four siblings. We were all young. But she had said, if, if, I, if, if I die, don't leave home. Be here. Anyone who wishes to help you may find you here and help you from there. Parents, you should also encourage that among your children because most children have been tortured and mistreated in, in other homes. Even though you're there, even though you're not there. When you stand in for your children, it can also help them. That helped us. We kept home. You can imagine five children in a house. But God was so great. I don't know. I don't even know how I can term it. He was so faithful. He took care of us. You can't even believe. I completed my primary seven. I got a first grade. And remember, I had my four siblings. The life I went through, it, every day is like, I don't even know how I can arrange it. But my life has been a testimony. It has been a miracle. So my four siblings, I, when I finished P7, God did a miracle. Some headmistress who didn't know me heard about me because I was the best at my school. The way God does his things. He gives you, he gives you what you even don't deserve. What you can't, I don't know. He, he makes a way. Because if I had not done that first grade, I think I would have not got even where to go. But God used somebody and they shared the story saying this girl is an orphan is here and here but she has no fees for secondary. The headmistress was like, bring her to me and I see her. They looked for me and found me. Me, I was in my own world. I didn't have any hope of going even to secondary because how? So the head, they took me to the headmistress and she was like, come on Wednesday and begin studying. In the best school in Rukunjiri, much later had. I was at Machet Hat for, for six years, not paying fees. That is the God we serve. And parents always pray for your children. When we would pass by that school when we were young, my mom would say, if my daughter could at least go in this school, even if it is one term, I would, I would be happy. But she was no longer there. Two years down, one year down the road after my P7, I was in that school for six years. Remember that prayer, which you prayed for your child. So I studied in that school. Meanwhile, my siblings were home. They were in primary six. Two were in primary six. Two were in a lower class. After P7, when they were to finish P7, I was in senior three. I prayed. I prayed to God. I wished all of us could study. It was my wish, and I would... 
I, read, I would pray. I learned to pray when I was that, that young because prayer is the only thing that took us through. I would pray for them and God gave me the grace that they would listen to me. When they would have a challenge, we would pray and I would fast for them. Uh, sometimes they would get badly behaved. I pray for them. God changes them. You can imagine when you're living at the mercy of other people and maybe you get to badly behaved and they have to chase you from school. So I had to pray for them so that the sponsors don't even know that they are badly behaved or they are almost being chased away from school or they are soon repeating a class. I would pray and God would do a miracle. They get promoted. So I prayed for my sisters that at least God would open a way and they get school fees. I prayed for a plan. God, please give me a plan. And God, God listens you people. God listens. I have a testimony about that. He listens. He listens to even a small prayer that you make. He listened to me and gave me a plan. He gave me a plan of just write about you. Then I, I wondered, whom am I writing to? I, I started writing letters. I'm sleepy. I have five siblings. What, what? We, they are in P7. We would wish them to study, but no school fees. So I didn't know where to place those letters. One day we were in a holiday. We were moving from church, going home. I was with my sister. We met two whites who were jogging. God brought them from Australia. They had come to visit the diocese, but for us, we were walking on our way home. We met them, and they had interest to know these children. Like, we were, like how are you? They were like, oh, how are you? What's your name? I'm Slivia. This is Olivia. Hey, they were like, I have a, 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 a granddaughter called Olivia. I, I immediately said, we have a Stephen and Alvin. And they were like, we also have a son called Stephen. He's the, he's the, um, the father to Olivia. So they, they, they continued, and we also went home. I was so excited. But remember, we had not exchanged contract, I mean contacts or anything. I went home. I went back to school. But I kept praying. Then one day there is a lady who was my friend's mom like long ago. We vi I visited her. I was, I was so excited to share with her that story of like we met some whites. And she was like, what is, the, what, what is their name? Like I, I, told, I told her. She was like, they are my friends. The first question was like, do you have their contact? Like their, their address? She had. So I wrote to them, remember the, the writing process, the God's plan, I wrote. I wrote to them, I sent the letter. That letter did miracles because they received the letter, they made investigations to see, is it true? Is it a true story about these children? And it was a true story. They came they, they, they sent someone who used to always come. He was also a friend to them. And told them, look for these kids. Tell them we love them. So they came and he phoned us. So he, he became like our dad. He kept coming to check on us. Even though the first part was not among that miracle, but that was a miracle. God, uh, after my... When I prayed and God brought those people, the headmistress at my school, the one who was paying for me, knew about my siblings. So she wished that uh, she shared with someone, some organization, my story, and that organization decided to, to add on my fees. So that fees was to pay for me, but it would be used to pay for my sisters. But that... The day that I was, that I received the, the letter, the day they finished P7, the day they did their PLE, is the day I got the, the letter that I had gone through that organization so that it pays for my sisters. But what happened when, I, when, um, when they were to start paying my fees, the ones who were paying for me cut the fees to half. So this fees topped up. The, the one that I was being paid for. So I, I, I saw that it was like a disappointment 
but I kept praying. I, I went to the school. I went to a school. I asked for a vacancy for my two sisters, and I told the headmaster, I've brought these two girls. I'm, going, I'm also going to school. So don't chase them. And I don't have school fees, but we shall pay. The headmaster couldn't even understand. But he let them. They were at school for the whole term. They didn't chase them, but God paid for them miraculously, and they completed their P7. Even my brothers, it's a long story. I can't say it all. But God also made a way for them. The day they were to join secondary, I carried them, both of them. I shopped for like one item for both of them. One case for both of them, one mattress for both of them. I took them to a different district because they had started becoming badly behaved. And when I prayed, God changed their hearts and they completed P7. Completing P7 was a miracle. When they completed P7, I didn't know what to do. I prayed, God give me wisdom to deal with this. Then I came to know that there is a school in Tungamo. It is... It is a religious school, so there, when they go there, I think they can, they can study. But I didn't have school fees, I didn't know anything, but I took them. I think it was good, it was good, and really he does, he can use you in your meekness. I went to that school, traveling to Ntungamo with my two brothers. The next day I also had to go back to school, I was in senior five by then. I took them to school. I left them at the gate, entered the school to ask for a vacancy. I reached in the office, I told them I brought two boys and I would, uh, I've come for a vacancy, but I don't have school fees and I pray that you, you accept them. Remember boarding school. The headmaster looked at me, he couldn't finish me, I think. He was wondering, how did you even come to know about this, this school because we didn't advertise said me I need a vacancy and I'm late for school because I need to go back to school also. He, God, God did a miracle that he accepted and the fees that I was expecting was half of the whole fees and if you would take the child to a different district, you needed to pay fees, bring the receipt and be refunded. If you took the child in the same district, they would drive to the school and pay. But me, I had taken them to a different district. So I asked the headmaster, yes, thank you for the vacancy, and thank you for being patient, but the only fees that we shall be paying is half. We don't know when we shall ever get the top up, but you will have to be patient with us. And I didn't come with the half, which I'm promising, I would like you to give me the receipt to show that I've paid so that I bring the money. He was like, do you know that is illegal? They can even imprison me. Is that even possible? I was like, now what do I do? Because I've already brought them. And if I don't get the receipt to show that I've paid, we shall not pay. He, you know, like, I don't know what you can even be thinking, but I don't know why I got all that courage throughout my life that I was dealing with that. He just, he just closed his eyes and made the receipt. He said, I'll put myself on Calabar in case I die, that's it. He gave me the receipt and allowed the boys in school, requested me to take one of them back, back so that he comes with the school fees the next day. He came back with the school fees, like the half. It was a miracle. From then, he would give them the receipt before they come home. And he was patient for all the years until when they were in S3 and they got some sponsors to top up even from the beginning. God, God is so faithful that that was some time back. Now, um, one of them is now a teacher, our last born. The second last born is, um, he started construction, but they finished senior four and joined some courses. But God did for him a miracle after seven years without being in school, like after that, that course, 
he didn't get what to do, what God did for him a miracle, and somebody said, if he's willing to go back to school, I'm taking back him to senior five, if he's willing. He was so willing, he's now in senior six. He's very old, but he's in senior six, and he's determined, he's, I pray that he passes well, and I believe he will do it. Our third born is a nurse, a clinical nurse. Our second born is, um, is a tailor. I thank God that he took us through all that. And me, after my senior six, my, my story was different. I did sciences. God gave, gave me wisdom, I don't know from where, but I studied. I finished senior four, the headmistress was like, come back. Remember the one who had taken me into the school died when I was in senior three. But then the new headmistress also came to know about me. She liked me. She said, come back for air. If I don't know where the fees will come from, but come. I finished my senior six. But after my senior six, I didn't get, uh, I didn't get school fees to the university. But I, I, I volunteered with the other whites whom we had met. They were like, uh, we would like you to come. We've, we've seen how you've looked after your, child, uh, your siblings. Can you help us go in some village and sensitize them? Tell them uh, about how to go about things. And I went to that village, I sensitized them. Then I thought, no, these people, it's not because, it's not because they are like this, it's because they, they lack. So I told them, if we could buy for them at least soap, food, they would be. They, they bought my idea. I wrote some orphans. They sponsored them, they bought for them food. God used me to also help others in a way that I didn't know. So throughout helping that, that's when they said, yes, Livia has helped us a lot. That's when they found sponsors for my brothers and for my sisters. At that level, I remember after my senior six. So I worked with them the whole year, no fees, no anything. And they also didn't have. Then one day somebody, some of their friends came to see the work they were doing. And they were like, Sleeve is done who has helped us to reach here. But she also wishes to go to the university. We don't have money to take her. He was like, I'm going to sponsor her. He paid all the fees for three years. I went to the university, I studied, and I got the first class. I thank God for that. God led me. I, 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 they had promised me that if I finish the course, I will come back to them. Remember, I had, I had sciences, so they took me to do social work and social administration so that when I come back, I help them with the children. But because all my, my classmates used to ask, Slavia, you were a scientist. How did you end up doing social work? But I remember, I spent a year without studying, and the chance I got was for social work. And that social work was to come back and help who? These people. When I finished and they said, ah, now you got a first class? You're too good for us. God will help you get a job. They didn't give me the job. I said, oh, God. But I kept praying. I knew it was for, for a reason and a big reason. So you need to take things positively and God will amaze you. I prayed God opened for me a door. I applied, got a job. I worked, it was stressing, I left that job, I started the shop, it failed. Then I prayed, God, please bless my papers and help me get a job. I got a plan, you walk, go, go to town. <laughs> I said, now how will I do that? I photocopied my papers, bought my papers, moved from where I stay, I reached on the, on the, on the road and I was like, so which direction should I take, dear God? Do I go to Rubaga? Do I go to town? The spirit was like, go to town. I boarded the taxi, reached in town, and I said, God, lead my feet. Lead my feet. I moved from New Park up through Chikubo, up. I continued moving until I reached my village there. Then it was like, now start going in any building. I went, I, st I, I began with a building next to, to my behind there. 
It was full of many, many people. I wondered, what are these people doing in here? I also entered to find they were all policemen, what? So it was CPS. I entered and I asked, uh, I didn't even that, that it was CPS, but I found myself there and I asked if uh, where I can test my CV. They were like, maybe go to that office. I entered the office, then the officer told me, maybe if you want training as a police person, uh, uh, that was not what I wanted, because my wanted a job. I didn't want even a job to be paid. I wanted to show that I can work, and I didn't want to stay home. Uh, that one I left. I went to the next building, it's Ministry of Gender. I entered. Uh, I moved on the steps. Even no one checked me at the gate. My just entered, I moved on the steps, reached for a lady who said, how can we help you? I said, can I find where I place this CV? She was like, go to that office. When I entered, the officer welcomed me. I was like, how can we help you? I was like, I need a job. Yeah, I know the youth need jobs. They need experience. What? I was like, can you come back at three? That was like a miracle, even though I didn't know why. I said yes. Hallelujah! <laughs> Nakati 
Amana, oh, this is where my local papers they came back and I number. You'll be going back and papa in check a way leader. Nanga, come and see that you walk up two lands and the application is one. Now, one big than our opinion application or did not office you or more one come and you are not generally in time. Nicoma Wong and no cookies are cutting a cookie, the workers in one home, Katinapa number your one in your texting of strong or little by the top of the name or open a sinner of bed against game. And I'm texting and in the end, we did some tests, they put us back for the training. A training with what a child, the cup and all the air was standing, who mammy were at a house. Gavagandi was even with them, child. Simon, it's a child to come out when you know, see the leader. This is what I've seen that I want a mammy way a cup. Nayanga Bagan did not give a money but while I room child. Nayo number of the never is uncommon to when I had an angle in the end of Kudonia went of Pakistan. I had a young man again and then soon was all a little teach. Having one day, each ever room, I want to come and our local young girl come much, catching again or who can even next time and swept. Catch your was a plan is on my position and it is any movie is in your watch of young commander and be safe for that. Ganafunya dana wa usula kwa na yari achi mani uba geenda mchara tika tizingi nda wana ngezi dawa tani chia yari achi kesi na yeye ni wazamu kama chia tu mani ni ntaro ngati tu mani achi chete kila kwa chete tu mani na kama ni na kwa lele kwa ni na zama kwa na training ya wote la ni nawa likila kwa bali mo ya kwa mu na yeku machanga rero bangu bide ni wanga mbaku mani ni ntaro kesi tu mani praise King Jesus. Amen. Praise mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm known by the name Emmanuel Amara. I really want to testify about the goodness of the Lord. Indeed, it's so amazing. I got married in 2019. So far, I'm making two years in marriage. But it has been a struggle. It has been a fight. Reached a point I couldn't handle it. But I had a neighbor. She told me, Manuela, I want you to join Yes, You Can Warrior. I said, Yes, You Can Warrior? What do you mean? When she explained it to me, I took it with faith. I said, It's okay. Let me join the group. I joined Mami Sandra. I began praying because I was going through battles. Battles of mother he knows they don't want you. Battles you are not conceiving, yet you are married. Everything was done. They have introduced you, waited you. What next? A child, not so? Yes. Things were hard, children of God. But when I joined it, I prayed. I kept on following her. When she says we go on prayer first, I would join. I would pray. I got right in my house. Reached a point, some friend of mine also joined me. So we kept on praying, believing that surely this mighty God will do it for me. I kept on praying. Then reached a point I was not picking interest. Faith had come even now gained my grounds. So I called my husband. I said there is some group. They also say Val of Val of men. Yes, men of valor. So I was like, but I don't have that her. I text her through her own WhatsApp. So she forwarded the number to him. He's not in Uganda. He also accepted. So we joined the hands. This time around when it came children of God, God has done it for me. I've already conceived. And this it is not enough. Even my kingdoms who have rejected me, they have not been talking to me. They took me as the worst woman. They are coming back one by one. This God is so amazing. Let's not give up. Let us follow what Mama is telling us. Indeed, what matters is faith. It's my first time to step here, but I could be in my house crying with her together through the platform. I wouldn't miss to know that data. So let us not be back in the Lord. It's really amazing. Be blessed.